the Lord be with you. Welcome to our third Sunday in Advent. The service is printed for you. Uh, what's not in your bulletin is after the Kyrie, we'll still sing the first stanza of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. I think most of you probably have it memorized. And then, uh, just in terms of announcements, we have the cookie sale going on today. And we also have a uh, voters meeting at 1.30 this afternoon uh, after the cookie sale. And um, I don't think we announced or planned Sunday school, but if there's enough people after the service, I'll have Bible, adult Bible class today if people want to attend that. So with that, let's begin with our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? With you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We speak together the words of the Lord. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. 
Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah, chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garments of praise instead of the faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are an offspring the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself, like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who called you is faithful. He will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please thank you for the reading of God. Yeah. 
according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. This is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. And they asked him, Then why are you baptizing, if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge Judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and a life for the world to come. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Now many people consider the year 2020 to be the year of the giant dumpster fire. 
We don't need to review all the events of 2020. After all, we lived in it. The pandemic came, public officials attempted to handle the situation, in some cases making things better and in others worse. People reacted to the situation, sometimes in better or worse ways. Nearly every area of our society has been affected. If you listen to the news, it seems that little good is going on in our country and in the world right now. Although the big news this morning is Pfizer is shipping their COVID vaccine. Maybe a little bit of good news. In some ways, we seem to be a divided and a polarized nation. Even Time Magazine recently put 2020 on its cover, and they didn't mean that as a compliment to the year. Many people can't wait until 2020 is over, hoping that the next year, 2021, brings better things. In fact, if something goes wrong, people are inclined just to say, it's 2020. Now the reading appointed today from 1 Thessalonians tells us to hold fast what is good. After this year, it may seem as if there's not much good to hold fast to. And this is why this letter from Thessalonians is so helpful for us today. Paul wrote this letter to the Thessalonians perhaps in late 51 or early 52 AD. The church in Thessalonica was the second church planted in Europe. The young congregation there faced many challenges, yet it was built on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. Members of the congregation faced persecution because they confessed Jesus. False prophets would wander from town to town seeking money, often from newly planted and young congregations like in Thessalonica. St. Paul tells the Thessalonians that he wanted to visit them again, but Satan himself prevented it. Now, we don't exactly know how Satan pre prevented St. Paul from going there. Nonetheless, it doesn't sound too good. We heard a few weeks ago how St. Paul gave this congregation instructions about waiting for the Lord Jesus to return. So our reading begins with something we discussed a couple of weeks ago. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. The reason we can rejoice always is because of the joy that we have in our Lord Jesus and what he has done for us. Earthly things bring us joy for a short time. Just think of a child playing with Christmas toys. There's a lot of joy when they open the toys and begin to play with them. But after a time, that joy fades. We find joy in various things from this world, only to have that fade also over time. St. Paul is reminding the Thessalonians to rejoice, to rejoice in what never fades, what Jesus Christ has done for us. And yet, because we face hardships in this world, because we face sadness, we need to be reminded to rejoice. So St. Paul calls for the Thessalonians and he calls for us to rejoice. St. Paul also tells them to pray without ceasing. Now, none of us can pray 24-7. And that isn't so much what St. Paul is getting at here. It doesn't mean we need to be praying every waking moment of the day, but rather that we are always ready to pray when we need to be praying. When need presents itself, whatever the circumstance, we should pray. Now a comfort to us is that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. And because he intercedes for us, the entire life of the Christian is one of prayer. 
even when we forget or when we are too overwhelmed to pray. And finally, St. Paul tells the Thessalonians to give thanks in all circumstances. What makes a Christian's life happy and joyful is being thankful for all the good that the Lord has given us. And this leads us to our theme for today, hold fast to what is good. For it is the good things that come from God that make us full of joy and thankful. Now in the context of this passage, it seems that St. Paul might have two things in mind, a narrower and a broader application about holding on to the good. In verse 20, St. Paul says, Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Now in the context, this sentence can stand alone, or it can be connected to the next phrase, holding on to the good. In the scripture, prophecy can refer to more than one thing. Now when we often think about prophecy, we probably think about knowing the future. We talk about Isaiah who prophesied 700 years before Jesus was born. Or we talk about how Micah prophesied that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. And indeed, this is one use in the scripture. And St. Paul's admonishment to test them holds true for these two. In Isaiah's case, Jesus was born of a virgin and he was called Emmanuel. In Micah's case, Jesus was in fact born in Bethlehem. Connecting to this understanding of knowing the future events, prophecy refers to the Lord revealing something supernaturally. Remember there were false prophets wandering from city to city, and St. Paul is telling them to test what they hear. Then there is another use in which prophecy is used. And it's used in the sense of regular preaching, because preaching reveals the Word of God to people. And St. Paul also tells the congregation, test that. When you hear preaching, you should evaluate it. Listen and see if it lines up with what you know of the scriptures. Test it. St. Paul tells the Thessalonians to do that. His statement about holding on to the good can apply to this too. Hold on to good prophecy. Hold on to good and faithful preaching. Now there's another aspect that St. Paul seems to be getting at about holding on to the good. He tells the Thessalonians to hold fast to good and to abstain from evil. When we start thinking about the things of this world and all that we're exposed to, we see good, but we also see a lot of evil. We receive many good gifts from God. In fact, St. Paul says that the Lord allows it to rain both on the believers and on the wicked and on the heathen. And this is due to God's goodness. So imagine for a moment, you have two farmers whose land is adjacent to each other. They're right next to each other. One of the farmers is a believer, and the other one is not. When it rains, it rains on both farms. And the Lord does this because he is a good God. He gives good things to his creation. The Lord gives us all that we need to support this body and life. Everything that he gives us to support our life is good. The Lord shows his goodness and mercy to us in other ways too. Now we as Christians living in this world are oftentimes tempted not to see the good, but to only see sin and evil. And indeed the world is sinful and evil. This year in particular, 2020, may have tempted us to not see the good, but only to see the evil. When we do not see the good that the Lord has given us, the good that the Lord has put into our lives, it's much more difficult for us to be thankful. It's more difficult for us to rejoice. 
At other times, we focus and are drawn towards the evil things of this world. We are tempted to enjoy the evil things that this world offers us, especially as it comes to us on our various screens and devices as we watch programs and shows or even the news. We focus on the evil. The reading for today tells us, abstain from every form of evil. As Christians, we are to guard ourselves from evil and avoid it. Focusing on the evil blocks the good that God gives us. It blocks us from seeing it, and we cannot hold fast to it. During this Advent season, we have been celebrating Thanksgiving and Advent. This is a joyful season because Jesus is coming into the world. And we as Christians are joyful for two reasons. First, we are joyful because we will celebrate the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. The birth of Jesus, even for non-Christians, changed the world more than anything else in its history. This is why we decorate with lights. This is why we have Christmas trees. And this is why we give presents to one another. Even when stores or government agencies say Happy Holidays instead of Merry Christmas, we know that it is a holiday, rather a holy day, because Jesus was born. His birth brought peace between God and man. His death on the cross and his resurrection gives us life and salvation. The salvation that we have in Jesus Christ gives us joy, it gives us hope, and it makes us a thankful people. And this is why Christmas is a joyous season for us. Now the other reason that we celebrate Advent is to prepare and be diligent for Jesus' return in glory. We rejoice and pray in all circumstances as we wait for our Lord's return. We give thanks for all that he has done for us, for all the good he has put in our lives. As this year draws to a close, we should take some time to reflect on all of the good that the Lord has done for us, all the good that he's put in our lives this past year. The greatest good that our Lord has done for us is he gave us life and he made us disciples through his Son, Jesus Christ. The Lord gives us good gifts. He gives us gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. He has given us the good gift of hearing his word. He has given us the good gift of his body and his blood in the Lord's Supper for the forgiveness of all of our sins. And the Lord has given you the gift of this congregation. Each and every day, the Lord gives us good gifts to support our body, our soul, and our life, all while we wait for his return. As we recognize the good gifts the Lord gives us, we rejoice, we pray in all circumstances, and we give thanks. This Advent, seek the Lord's goodness, hold fast to the good, and flee from evil. Rejoice, pray, and give thanks to the Lord for all that he has given you, especially your life and your salvation. He has forgiven you your sins and given you peace as you wait for his coming. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Keep, keep your saints from every folly that would turn them from your words of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, be the source of strength and comfort in every home. Bless the children of our families, that every darkness would be lightened by your Son's gracious visitation. Sanctify them completely, that their whole spirit, soul, and body may be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Give wisdom and success to our nation and its leaders. Behold in mercy all who are in authority over us and those newly elected. Preserve our land and its citizens in peace and harmony and protect all who serve in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our thanks in every circumstance for your kindness in Christ Jesus and the certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life of him. We pray especially for, for Bill and Carolyn, the family of Connie, Diane, Denise, Eula, Steve, Patience, Judy, Lois, the Salamitra family, Lyle, John, and Gary. Lord, in your mercy. Cure our prayer. Give us faith to believe the New Testament in your blood, to seek your holy supper for the forgiveness of our sins, to confess your truth with honest hearts and communion with one another at this altar today. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy Lord, God of Sabbath, Shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your boundless mercy you sent your servant John the Baptist to proclaim that in Christ the kingdom of heaven draws near. With thankful hearts we pray, come Lord Jesus, confident that in his body and blood given us to eat and drink we receive the forgiveness of sins and so proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us 
us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Is Christ true Lamb of God, you take the sins of the world away. O oh, Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, have mercy on us, Lord, we pray. Christ, true
Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Depart in peace. Amen. The body of Christ for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you.
rise for the Nunc Dimittis. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn. No. 